Hey, it's Herker from Play. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a swipeable card stack. So it's like that swipe right interaction that was popularized by Tinder. A lot of people have asked for us to start from scratch in these videos. So we're going to try that out here. The first part of this video will be us creating this card component. It's going to have a background image and some overlays on it. And then the second part is going to be adding interactions. So let's get started. First thing let's do is create our component. I like to do this piece by piece all in the canvas over here. And then once we're done, we can add it onto the page. So first thing, let's add an image. I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut I, drag the image size here. And if I want this to fill the entire size, I can either right click on the side and do fill by fill. It's going to be the exact height and width of any unused space, which in this case is going to be the size of the page. Or I can alternatively set the width to be 100% instead. Same thing with the height, 100%. Then I can double tap on my image or double click on my image and I can select one of these movie images I've already added. Wicked, I think this is the best movie ever, so we'll use that one. Next, let's create the positive overlay. So same way we just did image, I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut S, drag this. Let's set the, oops, let's set the width to be 100% and let's set the height also to be 100% here. Let's change the background color to be green, it's positive. Have that dark green. Nice. And I'm also going to change the alpha value to 88, which makes it just 88% um, opacity. Now inside this card stack, let's add a SO symbol. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut with this page or with the stack selected B that's going to add an SF symbol here. Now, before we start that SF symbol, select the whole stack again and change the alignment to center and distribution to center. So this SF symbol is right in the middle. Now let's double click and let's search thumbs up. And then we can change the element settings properties here. So maybe we make size 40, scale large, change the color to be white. Then we can also increase the container size, so the width and height over here. Awesome, last thing we need to do is just rename this. So I'm gonna double click on the canvas, the name up here, and let's just make it positive overlay. So we are going to increase the opacity of this on top of this image as the user pans right. But now we need to do the same thing for when the user pans left. So that's the negative one. I'm gonna take this, do Command D to duplicate it, and drag it over to the side, change the name from positive to negative. Then we can change this background color as well. We need to do a red for negative. And then let's change this to a thumbs down. I'm gonna keep all of the other SF symbol properties the same. So now all of these need to be combined into one component. So I'm going to select all of them and do Command G to group them together. Now this um, doesn't look great. Obviously this can be a little concerning at first, but this is a classic sizing issue. So for each one of the elements inside here, so this image, we set it to have a width of 100 and the stack is pretty big, 200 or 1290 points. So we just need to change the width of the whole stack. Let's change it to be fill here. And now it's gonna be much smaller. Now, as I scroll to the side, you'll see each part. But we want them to all be stacked on top of each other, not side by side. So we're gonna change the stack from a horizontal stack to a Z stack. So now they're all right on top of one another. Then I want to initially hide both the negative overlay and positive. So I'm gonna select each of them and I'm gonna set the opacity down to zero. So now all you can really see on here initially is that background image. Now let's select the whole card here and let's just rename it to be movie card. Maybe we can add a little bit of corner radius on here. Maybe I can right click on the corner, make it a squircle instead by using continuous corners. And then once you think this is good to go, then you can turn it into a component. So I'm gonna use this create component button in the uh, context bar up here. Make sure you have the entire card selected, not any piece of this. The whole card needs to be made into a component. Great, so now that's the main component. We can make a bunch of copies of this and those will be called instances. So let me just drag a bunch of these out here. Like I said, these are all instances of this component. So if something changes on this component, let's say it gets shorter, all of the instances are going to inherit that as well. So maybe we want this height to actually be fill. All of them will now have a height of fill now. The structure has to be the same for all instances of a component, but the data can be different. So I can have a different image in each one of these. So let's say for this 
first movie card. I want to use I'm Still Here instead. This next one, we could do The Brutalist. Next one, let's do Dune. Honestly, I haven't seen any of these movies. I have only seen Wicked and Nora. So now that we have each one of our data set up and each one of our instances, I'm gonna group these all together because we want them to all be one card stack. So I'm gonna select all of them, do Command G. Another funky thing happened with layout, but again, this is just a case of changing our sizing. So because with our card here, it's width is filled, all of these are filling up the width horizontally. So they're splitting this fill width here in five because there's five things in here. That's why they're so skinny. Again, we just need to change this from a horizontal stack to a Z stack. And now they're gonna all be one on top of each other and I'll stretch out to fill the entire width. And you can see this, if I hide this first card, you can see the next card is in there also correctly sized. So I can reshow that. Now, the last thing we wanna do here is select this whole stack and let's turn off clip to bounds. That means if there's any overflow, we're going to be able to see it now, which is important because as you pan this, we are moving it off to the side. And if we have the clip to bounds here, you won't be able to see that card anymore. So clip to bounds turned off. Last thing, let's rename this to be card stack. And then let's drag this card stack onto our page. You can change any of the uh, padding on the page. Maybe we wanna add a little bit more and make the card a little bit smaller. There we go. And now we have our card component designed and we have a bunch of instances of our card component in a stack on our page. We're ready to add interactions. So check out the next video, which I've linked below.